have said, good morning to all my students on the platform. In fact, today I'm going to lecture you on the syllabus and chapter one, chapter one of the lecture material. Now, if you look at the syllabus that was given to you, it comprises of something we call strength of materials and the details of how we are going to understand strength. So if you look at the course catalog description on page one of the uh, course syllabus, page one of the course syllabus that was given to you, you can see on page one, we have the course catalog description. So, and what we are going to do this semester will comprise of something we call stress and strain, easily loaded bars, deformation, mechanical properties of materials, Poisson's ratio, tensor and compressive tests, stress strain curves, shear stresses, easier loose, statically indeterminate members, thermal stresses, torsion, a twist in a shaft, and so on. Uh, and then we will finish with bending stresses in beams and pressurized vessels. So this is going to be the course syllabus for strength of materials. The course syllabus for strength of materials. So you can see that one in page one. So why study strength of materials? Very important. We are saying that we are saying that strength of material. What is strength of material itself? Strength of material is a branch of mechanics that studies stresses that exist internally and strains that exist internally within a solid body. So if you want to understand stresses that exist in materials, for instance, you have a table, the stresses that exist as you sit on it. Then we are doing something, we are studying something we call strength of material. Therefore, we are saying that strength is associated with the strength of a material from which a body is made. That is what stress is. What about strain? We say strain is a measure of the deformation of a body. For instance, if you slap someone and the person is a fair colored person, you could see damage, damage in the, the area. area. If, if you, you have, have a chair, chair and you sit on, on the, the chair, chair consistently, consistently, it will come, come to a time that you could see that the chair, there's a crack somewhere, or there is a deformation, or even the painting at the surface of the chair is already gone. So you could see that deformation happens as we apply a force to an object. And the way to be able to calculate the stresses and the strains that exist in the material, this is what we are saying we are going to do under the topic strength of materials. And actually, strength of materials exist in two fields. One, we have something called theory of elasticity, and then the second one is theory of plasticity. So what is the importance of steady strength of material? One important is that we can use, if you study strength of material, we can use it to design objects within a material, or within a machine, or within a structure. And we can also use it to analyze stresses. We can understand the stresses that exist within a material. So these are some of the importance of studying strain of material. So we are saying strain of material is a branch of mechanics that studies the internal effect or internal stresses and strain in a solid body. What are some of the engineering applications of strength of materials? One, we have reinforced concrete columns. Most of our buildings, we build columns. If you want to build story buildings, what do you do? You build columns. And stresses exist because we reinforced the concrete with iron rods. So you can calculate the stresses within the world, iron rods, and so on. The human body. Electric pole. Cables, propeller shafts, boats, tables, chairs, bears, chassis, mechanical elements. These are all engineering applications of strength of materials. 
All that I'm lecturing is in page one of our course syllabus. So if you look at page two of the course syllabus, I have already pasted photos of some of the G applications. You can see reinforced concrete what? Columns. You can see reinforced concrete column is there. It's very clear. You can see the chassis I'm talking about. I've circled those images. And you can see even the reinforced concrete, there are what? Iron rods in it. You can see electric poles in page two of our course syllabus. You can see human body, children, four children there. You can see crane part. You can see boats also there, boats, and so on. These are all engineering application areas of strength of materials, where we apply strength of materials. Now, I have recommended some books in page three of our course syllabus. And you can see clearly that I have five different kinds of books. The first one is Static and mechanic, Mechanics of Materials, fifth edition. That's very good. We have Hebela. I will see mechanics of materials, 10th edition, very powerful. We have Bear and Ferdinand P. That's another strength of materials book. And so in page three, you can see the reference books are also there. And then on page three, you will see my name, Professor Dr. Lauren Jansen. My telephone number is also there and my email address. I don't want students to worry me with my telephone calls. You have your class rep, so channel everything through your class rep. So I don't want to, and then you could see attendance. Some of the, how I'm going to do my continual ass assessment, the rules are there, and homeworks, and the homework. For instance, if I give an assignment, I can give you this week, produce it, or two days time, produce it. And then I will mark and give you the mark. So what is going to be the continuous assessment? If you look at page four, I have divided our lectures into how many weeks? 12 weeks. What you are going to do? So that is very clear. Week one, week two, week three, week four, and so on. That is also seen in page four of our lecture material. So you could see, uh, I said second week, We'll be doing stress and strain. We are already in second week already. So we have to fix stress and strain and then start uh, mechanical properties and so on in page four of our lecture material uh, of uh, the course syllabus. Now, if you look at the last page of our course syllabus, you will see page five. That is the page five. You can see the assessment and the grading system. Now, there's slight change on the assessment. Why? Because the university is saying that 60% is the continual assessment and 40% is the final. If there is any change, uh, the university will make it available. So if you look at if that is going to be the case, then our midterm examination will be 40%, not 20% on the table. It will be 40%. And then maybe if there's a laboratory, it will be 5%. Quizzes will take 10 and then homework we we'll also take five. So if we calculate, it's going to be midterm 40, laboratory five, quizzes 10, homework five. If you add it, you get 60. And then the final exams, no, then the attendance, I will also give attendance five. So the quizzes, I will make it five. Possible, the quizzes, I'll make it five. So if you add all, you are going to get 40. Because attendance, I will give five free of charge. And then I will give homework, if possible, five. Quizzes five, lab, borrow it to five, making it 20. If you add it to 40 midterm examination, you will get 60. And I'll add it to the final exams, which is going to be 40. So this is going to be my how I'm going to assess set of materials this semester. And this is going to be the grading. This is how the grading is. If you had an A, then it means you had a max between 80 to 100. That's A. If you had a minus, there's going to be 75 to 79 percent is what you had, so you get A minus. If you if you had B plus, it's going to be 70 to 74, and that's B plus, and blah 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 blah. And those who want the Brahabe Bombe estate, F 0 to 44, you get F. 
With this, I am going to end my lecture on the course syllabus. The course say. So, so as, as I, I said, said as I, I continue, continue, let's yes. look at our lecture materials now. Chapter one, chapter one, stress and strain, stress and strain, stress and strain. If you look at chapter one of our lecture material, which is page one of our lecture material, I have outlined the objectives of the lecture. I said in this chapter, we will review some of the important principles of statics and show how they are used to determine something we call internal resultant loadings in the body. When we say internal resultant loadings, we are saying that everybody in this universe has some degree of force inside. There is a force inside. And all the submission of the forces within the body eh, is being represented by a single force called a resultant force. This is what we are going to study this under chapter chapter one. And we are going to understand the internal stresses of forces and also the deformation, which is the strain within the body, the damage within the body. Then in the same chapter one, I will also highlight on normal and shear stress. We'll be introduced, and then we will understand something we called easier load or direct shear will also be discussed. We have already, I've already defined what strength of materials are. So strength of material is a branch of mechanics that studies the internal st stresses or effects of stress and strain in the solid body. It's very clear. And therefore we are saying that a stress is always associated with strength. Strength. So if somebody talks about strength, then stress is associated with strength of the material from which the body is being made. And therefore, I'm also saying that a strain is actually a deformation, a damage to the body caused by the force that is applied on the what? On the, on the machine. So that is what? Strain. Strain is normally dimensionless, but stress is measured in what? Pascal, Pascals, or Newton per meter squared. So we are saying that stress It's always measured in what? Pascals. It's very important. Or Newton per meter squared. It's very important. I already said in the course syllabus that the strength of material is categorized into two fields. Theory of elasticity, which talks about in on the stress strain curve, when you pull a material, the straight portion of the curve where when you unload the material come back to its original state is called elasticity elastic regime it's called the elastic regime so from here on page one i've indicated elastic regime elastic and then after elastic regime then we go into a place called a plastic regime so for instance if you have a the normal elastic we use in our dresses, if we stretch it and release it, it will come back to its original state. Then, if we want to study such process, then we are talking about something called theory of elasticity. But like a chewing gum that we use to chew the gum, if you chew and you pull it, you could see that it will elongate and continue to elongate and continue to extend and extend and extend. If that is the case, then it is plastic. It is plastic because it will not return to its original state. So that is under theory of plasticity. Theory of plasticity is very, very important in stress strain curve. Okay. Now, let's look at another topic in chapter one, page one. There is something called equilibrium of deformable body. When we say a body is deformed, it means it's been subjected to what? Stresses or forces that has caused a change in its shape. Then the body is being deformed. As I said, if you sit even in a car, sometimes when you buy a brand new car and you're using it on a very good 
road, you could say that the shock is okay, but as time goes on, because vibrations and other aspect of forces which are unbalanced will cause a noise within the system. So if it's an equilibrium of the former body, we are saying that a body where when a, a, a forces are subjected to it, all the forces will be balanced, which means the left hand side forces and the right hand side forces subjected to the object are balanced. If that is the case, then we are saying that the body is at equilibrium. Equilibrium as indicated on the rectangular diagram in page one. Because the force F1 and F2 will be the same. F1 is the same as F2. Then all the forces in the left and right hand side are the same, that the body is in equilibrium. It's very important. Now let's look at some of the loadings that happens on the body. Because we are saying that an accident of materials, we expect loads to be applied which will cause an internal stresses within the body and also change in shape of the body because the body will deform. This is what we are saying. And therefore, in central materials, we are stating stress and strain. That means force over area, force per unit area, where the force acts. And then the deformation, which is the change in shape of the body, is what we are stating in chapter one of this lecture material. So what are some of the most of loadings we have two types of loadings we have something called the surface loads and then the body forces the surface loads and the body forces now the surface loads that act on a small area of contact are reported by concentrated forces and whilst distributed loadings act over a large area. So if you say concentrated forces, if you look at the diagram I have drawn where we have F1 and F2 on it, concentrated forces is shown as, let's say, F3 on top. Then distributed loading, you could see some zigzag on top. That on top of the diagram is called the uh, distributed distributed loads that means the load are over a very large surface but the concentrated forces are just subjected to a unit area a unit area then becomes a concentrated force so these are the two the first surface loads are divided into two Surface loads are divided into two concentrated forces and distributed loadings. Surface loads are divided into two concentrated forces and distributed, distributed loadings. Okay, so we are continuing from where we reach. So if you look at chapter one, page two, both page one and page two of the lecture material, we are continuing from where we reach concerning modes of loadings. As I said, we have something we call the surface loads and the body forces. And the surface loads is divided into two concentrated forces, which are forces that are subjected to a unit area. Like in figure one of the lecture material, as I repeat myself, you could see 700 Newton is a, a concentrated force. It's very clear. Whilst 200 Newton per meter there is a, is a distributed loadings. Whereas FR, which is 400 Newton, also is a concentrated force. It's very clear there. And so on. Now, if you look at figure one, which is a core planar, if you say core planar, it means all the forces are acting on the external surface of the object. And it's at equilibrium. So core planar forces on top as figure one and two, then a resultant force, you can see a, a resultant force FR of a distributed loading is equal to the area under the distribution diagram. So if you look at the length from the distribution diagram, you can see the distribution diagram in figure one of the beam AB of figure one. The distribution starts from A and ends at what? One meter plus one meter. Up to that point, giving you what? Two meters. 
So if we multiply two meters by 200, if we multiply two meters by 200 Newton per meter, you will get what you are seeing in figure one, which is what? FR, which is a resultant force for the distributed loading as 400 Newtons. I think it is clear. Clear, is there. So you have two times 200, giving you 400 Newtons, and that 400 should act at the center. C, at C, at the center C of figure one. So this is very clear. I've already explained that. And you can see figure two, two contains what? Uh, forces in the what? In the ropes. If you section it, if you section the ropes, it will have forces within it. Forces within it. It's very, very clear. Forces within the ropes. So this is what we talk, we are, we are talking about concentrated forces and distributed loadings under surface loads. Why? The, because the load acts at the surface of the what structure, we say surface loads, and it comprises two fields, concentrated and distributed. What about body forces? On page two of the lecture material, body force. What is a body force? Example of a body force is our normal weight, the weight of an object. And you know the weight of an object acts at the centroid of the object. And the centroid is how the total weight of an object can what? Can act. So therefore, a body force is developed when one body is set a force on another body without direct physical what? Contact between the what? Bodies. It's very important. So example is the weight. So you're saying the example, example, the effect caused by the earth gravitational and electromagnetic field is a body force. And most of the time, when we want to illustrate body force, these forces affect the particles composing the body, and therefore are normally represented by what? A concentrated force at the center right of the body. So, in the case of gravitation, this is called weight, as I said earlier on. And what is weight? Weight is what? Mass times gravity. And what is gravity? The value for gravity. The value for gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. And you know mass of a substance already. So if you multiply the mass of a substance by acceleration due to gravity, you get the weight, and a weight is an example of a body force. Thank you very much. We will continue our lectures with support reactions in strength of materials. Support reactions in strength of materials. So now let's continue with our lecture on something we call support reactions. For instance, if you have a table, table have the table has legs that it stands on, it sits on. So there will be reactions within the what the legs. These are the support reactions. So we are saying that we want to understand the different types of support reactions we have in strength of materials. Because whenever you want to calculate forces that exist in a material, you have to understand how to get the reactions first. At some point, if the, the support reaction is P reaction support, we will have about two forces that will exist at that point. If it's a roller support, we will have a single force perpendicular to the plane. If it is a P, a fixed support, they have to have, you will get two forces with what? A couple, a moment, and so on. So we have to understand what support system is. So we are saying that in support reactions, if the support prevents translation in the given direction, then a force must be developed on the member in that direction. It's very important. But if it restricts rotation, it's pre rotation is prevented, then we have something called a couple moment must be exerted on the member, as I, I earlier said. For example, if we look at the roller support in table one, table one, if you look at the roller support in table one, you could see clearly that it only prevents translation perpendicular or normal to the surface. Look at table one, roller support. Hence, we are saying that smooth support or the roller support 
set a normal for say f on a member or the structure at its point of what contact so note that if it's a relay support you will not encounter a burning moment or a couple moment so we are saying that since the member can freely rotate about the roller and it's not restricted in any way a couple moment cannot cannot and i repeat a couple moment cannot be developed on the member it's very very important if you look at figure three of our, our page figure three of page three of our lecture material you could see many machine elements are there like the the bulldozers the power shovels we see in tractor equipment the cats equipment the joints are called another type of support called pin connected support or pin reaction support it is very clear illustrated with arrows on the diagram with arrows on the diagram it is very clear there you call and that's another type of support called the pin connected support the pin connected support so then look at january on page three of table table one support reactions you can see clearly the free body diagrams that have been drawn in table what one when i say free body diagram it means any diagram that exposes the internal forces and plus the external forces of a structure is a free body diagram so you could see example type of connection that type of support if it is cable if you draw the free body diagram how many force will you see you see a force through the what the cable one single force f through the cable for instance if it is an external pin like the one we see in articulator tracks the one we see in uh, bulldozers the one we see in power shovels the one you see in back hoops the one you see in front end loaders which are tractor equipment machines and also lobes and so on you could see clearly that those forces if you draw a free body diagram those forces will be two different forces one along the x and one along the y now for instance if you look at the table if you want to draw a fixed support look at fixed support in a fixed support because movement is restricted in all directions you have two forces plus a couple movements you can see a force along the s or and a force along the y plus a movement m so this is what we call support systems support systems and in a support system there should be equilibrium in the system of course so we are saying that equilibrium of a body requires both a balance forces to, rep to present what a body from what translating or from acceleration or from having accelerated motion along a straight or curved path and of course a balance of movement because there are two we have first of all a balance of forces which is the forces along the s and y directions and so on and then we should also need a balance of what moment and these equations are called equation of equilibrium and that is shown in equation what equation two of page four of the lecture material so equation of equ equ equation of equilibrium is made about summation of all forces along a certain direction should be equal to zero and summation of moment at a certain point should also be equal to zero if these two are satisfied then the body is at equilibrium that is why they say equation of equilibrium equation of equilibrium is very very important so we are going to continue by looking at an example in our our lecture material an example in our lecture material we are going to continue to look at a tutorial example if you look at uh, example one of our lecture material page four we are asked to determine the support reaction or reactions at point where point p now the first thing you have to do is to draw something we call free body diagram fbd fbd free body diagram that expose the external and then 
the internal forces. And then if you look at if you if you do the field body diagram, you see the field body diagram below. That is page what five. And you could see that at point B, we have illustrated a force NB at an angle 45. Because if if the angle down is 45, by parallelism, the angle at the top is 45. That's corresponding angles. And if you want to do that, you only have to take moment at where? Point B, because we are going to use summation of moment at a certain point, B is equal to zero. That's all that he's using. The equilibrium equation. It will sum forces at point B, and you have to know your direction. Maybe clockwise is positive, and therefore anti-clockwise is what? It's negative. You have to choose your direction. And therefore, you have to resolve NB along the X and Y directions. If you do that, you're going to get NB sign what? Sign 45 times what? The distance from where? From where NB is to what? Point, what? Point, uh, point A. Summation of moment at point A, rather. If you do that, you could see clearly that you have NB sign 45 times 6 minus what? There's an external force, 5 kN. So 5 times what? 4.5 meters from what? Point A is equal to 0. And this implies that MB will give you what? The answer there, which is uh, 5.303 kilo newtons. This is a very simple tutorial how to calculate the support reactions. Support reactions. We move ahead to look at what we call internal resultant loadings. I said that when the body subjected a coplanar system, the body subjected to forces, there will be a single force that will definitely act at the centroid of the body. Or there can be an internal forces when you session through the structure. So if you look at page five of your lecture material, we call something internal resultant loadings. If you cut through a member, we expect forces to exist. For instance, if you look at page 5 of uh, figure 4A, you could see that there are forces, coplanar forces. F1, F2, F3, and say F4. Now, if we search it through it, and we take the down part of it, we will still have F1 and what? F2 exist downstairs, why there will be a lot of stresses within the system up. Now these stresses that comprise of a lot of forces that comes together, we can represent these several forces by a single word, force and a moment. For instance, you could see figure four C, you could see that those forces at the top of figure four B, a lot of arrows drawn at the top, have been represented by what? a moment, and what? FR. This FR is called internal resultant load. Internal resultant load. Or some, some book will say resultant force. Some book will say resultant force. So we are saying categorically, in order to obtain internal loading acting on a specific region within the body, we pass something called marginal section, as I've said. We cut through it and we take one aspect of it. It will be, if you cut through an object, you will get two parts. You pick one and then you illustrate the internal forces that exist and you calculate your moment and the resultant force. That's all that we are doing. Now the two parts of the body are then separated, as I said, and a free body diagram will be what? Drawn. However, or how bad, there will be a distribution of internal force acting on the exposed area of the surface as shown in figure what, 4B, as I've said. And these forces actually represent the effect of the material on top section of the body acting on the bottom section. So action and reaction are equal and opposite, as they keep on saying. So what that we are doing is that we are representing all these several forces by what? 
a movement and a resultant force. That's all that we are doing under internal resultant loadings. So in general, we don't want to go so deep into uh, the advanced nature of internal loading. But let me emphasize that if a body is subjected to a coplanar system of forces, you know the coplanar system, the one that acts externally within the body, as I've said and said and said. So if a body is subjected to a coplanar system of forces, as in figure out 5B, then when you session and you divide the structure into two parts and you pick one, you will see a normal force, a shear force, and the bending movement will act at the, the cut surface of the structural member. So how many? If it's a coplanar system of forces, then you see how many forces? A normal force, a shear force, and the bending movement will act, as illustrated in figure 5 what? A. Figure 5A. So it's very clear in page six of figure five a you could see the forces have been illustrated after we divided the rigid body shown in the five b figure five a after we yes we separated the rigid body in figure five a and then we draw the free body diagram in figure five b you could see i've circled there how many forces for coplanar at the at the separated point at point o you will see a shear force v V is called shear force. And then you see M, O, which is called what? Bending moment. And you see N, which is called the normal force. So how many forces do you see? Three. Shear force along the Y direction. Normal force along the what? X direction. And the resisting moment at the point O. So the question is, how do you calculate this? If you want to calculate this, you have to apply the equilibrium equation, which says some forces along the road, a certain direction, y equal to zero, or some forces along the x and equal to zero, or some forces along the z and equal to what? Zero, and also take moment at any point and equal to zero. These are the equilibrium equations. If we apply some of the forces along the s, equal to zero, there will be a missing value where you want you want the answer. So you make it the subject and then that will be your answer. It will take moment, you only have to make sure that maybe clockwise is positive, you have to take your direction very important and anti-clockwise is negative. So that all the forces that will rotate the member in a clockwise direction is going to be say positive. And those who will resist the member in anti-clockwise direction is going to be negative. You subtract and then you equate everything to zero and you'll find the missing value. This is how we find something called internal resultant loadings. So how many internal resultant loadings we have in coplanar system of forces? Three, shear force, normal force, and bending moments. So you can see the example two. I will not get time to go through example two with you, but example two is in page what? Six, and the solution is there and that is tutorials it is up to you to read if you don't understand anything you can ask questions about it but for example two i will not go through example two you can also look at example three of the lecture material example three in the lecture material also talks about how to find illustrate how to calculate the internal resultant word loadings it's very very important so you could see clearly the solutions are there so it is up to you to read through because i I decided to put these solutions there so that it will help you to calculate the internal resultant loadings of a, of a structure member, of a structural member. So you can see example 3, 2 is there in page what? 7 up to page 8. It's very clear. The free body diagrams have been dropped, circled it in the diagram, and then the solution have tipped the solutions and the answers there. You have to go through and understand it by yourself thank you very much for today i am going to give an assignment i'm going to give an assignment and the assignment should be submitted today is uh, what do you call it uh, today is wednesday eh? so 
Uh, maybe Friday. Wednesday. Wednesday. Thursday. Friday. So on Friday, 9 a.m. in the morning, please, you have to submit your assignment to me in WhatsApp individually. Submit your assignment to me on WhatsApp individually. Or no, 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 for transparency sake, submit your assignment on the WhatsApp group so I can download it one by one. But when I mark your script, I will submit your your, your script, your mark script individually. That's better. So 9 a.m. Friday submit the assignment and i'm going to give the assignment very soon on the platform on the whatsapp platform so submit your assignment on friday 9 a.m in the morning on the whatsapp platform late submission will not be tolerated i will not mark it i will not mark it and when i mark and i'll give you the mark i will give the script to you individually through your whatsapp your own whatsapp pages thank you very much and God bless you all. If there's any question, go ahead and ask me. Thank you for listening to me for today. Thank you. And bye-bye. So, so this is your assignment. assignment. Question number E, page 10. Question, question number E, page 10. It's your assignment. Submit it Friday morning, 9 a.m. If you like to do so, I will not mark it. Thank you. So